So this is going to be a video that is a review on converting um, fractions, decimals, and percents and also scientific notation. So this is going to cover questions 3, 4, 5, and 6 in the review slides, all right? So for question 3 here, we just want to know which number would make the sentence true, and we have a fraction and a decimal. <clears throat> so for the fraction, if in the calculator, if you take 2 and divide it by 11, this is what we're going to get. So 2 divided by 11 is a 0.18, all right? So I'm just now going to swap this out for a 0.18, and it does repeat. And it's okay then if we put that little line. So we're looking for something that's going to be bigger than 0.18, but we want it to be smaller than 1.42. So if we look at all of these options here, we the goal would be to just figure out which one of these is going to be bigger than 0.8, but then smaller than 1.42, so in between. Now A is 1 and 2 thirds, and even though the decimal does keep going on, we can see that 1.6 something is going to be bigger than this answer, so A is out. Now, B is a 0.153, and 1515 right here, this 0.15 is going to be too small. This is going to be less than 0.18, so that's too small. Now, this 0.22 right here, 22% as a decimal, you just move the decimal back twice, and it makes it a 0.22, and we don't really need that zero. So 0.22 is the number that's going to be bigger than 0.18, and less than 1.42. So 22% is smack dab in, uh, in between those numbers. Now for D, uh, anything times 10 to the first power, that decimal is going to move over once, and I'm going to review this now with scientific notation. Uh, 1.3 times 10 is going to be 13, and of course that would be too big. So for this one we're going to pick C. And so now that we saw scientific notation, <clears throat> Let me go through and review now some scientific notation stuff with you guys. So I want to review first the positive exponent, <clears throat> then we'll review negative exponents. So really what's going on with 3.19 times 10 to the fourth is it's really a 3.19 times 10,000. You already saw that 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000, and we already reviewed that um, 10 to the negative fourth is going to be this 1 10 thousandth. Also, real quick, <clears throat> friendly reminder that if there's a 4 here, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. And if we have a negative 4 here, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, including the decimal point. So now what we can do is we can just review how the shortcut worked. If we have a positive 4 and you have the 3.19, it says to just simply move the decimal over 4 times. And here, if we move it over 4 times, 2 spots are taken up. So we'll need three, or sorry, two extra zeros. If this was a five, then I'd include a fifth spot and I'd fill it up with three zeros. But it's a four, so we don't need that last part. So right here, we're going to get that 3.19 times 10 to the fourth is 31,900. Okay? And that kind of makes sense because three times three ish times 10,000 is going to be about 30,000. So if it's a little bit more than 3, it should be a little bit more than 30,000. All right, now let's review with a negative exponent the fact that the decimal goes the opposite direction. It's just simply going to move back 4. So notice I moved it back 1, 2, 3, 4, and now I'm going to fill it in with zeros. And if you include the zero point right there, it's going to be the four zeros, and we'll get 0.00. .00 zero three one nine so you can count the four zeros there careful over here if we're going to move it four times and two spots are taken up we only need two extra zeros all right on the sol you might see something like what's 4.6 million in scientific notation and so if it's 4.6 a million is 10 to the sixth power i just wanted to remind you guys that a million is 10 to the sixth power and if we move this decimal over six times, we would get one, two, three, four, five, six. And then let me show you guys here when I fill it in with zeros and then put some commas in. Every three places we put a comma, comma. So that's 4,600,000, which is the same as 4.6 million. All right, a couple more questions real quick. I just want to review if you see a question like this, how to determine what the exponent should be. So now we're given the number in standard form. 
and we're going to try to write it in scientific. So this in red is standard form, and our goal is to write it into scientific notation. Now I already reviewed with the decimals, you can count the zeros, and this is going to be an easy negative two and to help you see it. Boom, one, two moves. So that's why N here would be a negative two. All right, over here, the decimal starts out this way and we're moving it one, two, three, four times. So here the dec or the N would be a four. 3.2 times 10 to the fourth would move it one, two, three, four, and we get 32,000. And 5.1 times 10 to the negative two, it'd move it back and we would get 0 0.051. Now we have a couple more questions. We already did question three here, but I wanted to review scientific notation because it came up in question D, or in answer choice D. But now let's take a look at question four, all right? We wanna click and drag the numbers into the boxes so that they are in order from least to greatest. And you have a percent, a decimal, a fraction, and something in scientific notation. So I wanted to review a couple different methods with you guys. First, what I've done is I have just rewritten every answer as a decimal, all right? So this 6.7, I moved the decimal back twice, one, two, and that's how I got 0 0.067. This one was already given as a decimal. Now six ninths reduces to two thirds, which is the 0.6 repeating. And we reviewed now with scientific notation, the fact that this decimal is gonna move back one, two, three times. So if it was right here, uh, let me see if I can show you. If it was in between the six and seven, it went back one, two, three, and there's the three zeros. Now, some of you are decimal people, others of you are percent people, so I do have a row here of the percents just in case. So again, some of you might prefer this second chunk of numbers. You might prefer the percents. But the first number was already given as a percent, so there it is. Now, 0 0.67, 67 hundredths is 67%. You just move the decimal over the other way twice. And same thing here when moving this over twice. And it does repeat, and it is okay that we put the 0.6 repeating right there for the percent. And here when I move this over twice to make it a percent, I'm going to get a 0.67%. And so now when we click and drag for least to greatest, I'm a percent person. So I'm going to see here that the 0.67% is less than 1%. So that's going to be clearly the smallest number. So you're going to click and drag in the slides the scientific notation problem first. Okay, so we took care of that one. Now 6.7% comes next. Followed by the repeating, 66.6 .6 repeating. It would round up to 67, but as it is right there, it's going to be smaller than the last one, which would be, um, oh, sorry, that was actually six nights. I should write the original form here, six ninths. And the biggest number in our list is the decimal that we were given, the 0.67. All right, so now you can click and drag if you need to. And for question five, we now wanna know which number is bigger than one and two thirds. So what I did was I took the one and two thirds and I just wrote it here as a decimal. And so we can easily see 1.3 something is not gonna be bigger than 1.6 something. Now this percent, if I move it over and make it a decimal, I'm gonna get 1.66. So I'm gonna write it underneath and then line up with zeros. We can see that right here, zero is smaller than this six, so we're not gonna pick B. Now if we're looking for something that's bigger than one and two thirds, there it is y'all. Seven thirds, three goes into seven twice and we get one out of the three left over. The last one, just so that we can rule it out, 1.60 would be smaller than 1.66. And the reason I know this is 1.6 is because anything to the zero power is one, and anything times one is itself. And so that one would not be bigger than the 1.6 repeating, okay? All right, now we're on the last question that pertains to this review topic. And so the last question here that we wanted to review is um, identify two numbers here that are going to be smaller than three. Okay, so according to scientific notation, we're going to move this decimal over once and the first number is a 29. That is not smaller than three. For this one, we're going to move the decimal over three times and get 3,200. That number is not smaller than three. 
anything to the zero power is one. So 2.9 times one is a 2.9. That value is less than three. And here, if we move this one back twice, we're gonna get a 0 0.032. And that one is less. So these two right here are going to be the numbers that we've identified as less than three. And that concludes this video. Thank you.